stuff that is not necessarily the most polished stuff. Um, there are going to be definitely going to be some rough moments. Uh, <clears throat> now, Jesus. Oh God. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now, if you're, can we get now? Who's got space on their phone and has charge on their phone right now? Can you record this? You on it? Okay. And who? Who else? Raise your hand if you're here also. Okay. I'm going to need you to record the second half. Okay, in case he runs out. And don't post it to Reddit. <clears throat> and also, you need to know how to use Dropbox. Vertical or horizontal? Uh, let's go, let's always, go with always, uh, always portrait, or layout. <clears throat> horizontal. I mean, or this way. Okay. This time. <laughs> Which way? This way. <laughs> Got it. See? Oh. What was the thing I thought of? Hold on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now, let's get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way right now. <clears throat> I'm going to say whatever, what's on the minds of everybody in this room right now. I'm going to get this off, off the top of the head here. I have planted a thermonuclear device in a major metropolitan area. It is set to explode. <clears throat> I have planted a bomb. I have planted a homemade bomb device in a Jewish daycare in New York City. And it will go off if my demands are not met. My demands are the full surrender of the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, immediately. Thank you. <clears throat> now, I hope you're not turning that mic down. No, 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 no. We need it hot. We never do that. We need it hot. Does it ruin the equipment? It doesn't break the equipment, right? No. Let's get it hot. James, you handle it. You keep it hot for me. I don't want it cold. <clears throat> okay. Nope. Now we're back in action. Get some reverb on that. Some echo. Please. Get it hot. Get it started. Get it fired up. Okay? A little bit. Over the top. I'm so excited. What? That's good. That's what I want. Echo. Test. I'm here in front of this stadium in front of 200 people. Ready to rip! <clears throat> Alright. So, I'm a bit more egotistical than, thank you very much, your standard comedian. Okay, I like to... Now, make sure you... Everybody make sure we're recording. And if you, if you run out of space, you let me know. You shout it out. <clears throat> I have a bit of an ego, so I like to... You know, they'll sometimes bring people out. James is doing live mixing right here. James Price, ladies and gentlemen, do his, does audio for MDE. He's the reason why it's so crystal smooth. KSTV is crystal smooth audio. When you get that, you'll understand. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but uh, I like to hype myself up. I don't have a hype man. I hype myself up. So everybody, big round of applause. Big, big round of applause. Yeah. Big round of applause. Big, big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly what I needed. What if I told you that that right there was my impression of a Chinese man? Do we have any Chinese in the audience? <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Chinese scanner activated. We are a Chinese... Oh, back there. Hey, shout out to you. Your nation is powerful. We respect you, okay? But what if I told you that that was my impersonation of a Chinese person? Boop. Is that racist? Are we, in the, are we getting into a racist zone yet? Is it accurate enough for that to be racist? What do you think, young lady? What do you think? This won't reach you, but you're going to shout it out anyway. What do you think? Is that too racist? No. No. Okay. How about this? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. What if my impersonation of a Chinese was this light? Okay? <clears throat> okay? You've got photons coming out, a blue filter. Pretty Chinese, isn't it? This shroud here ensures that there's a cone of light coming out. It's not really reaching you guys, okay? But here it is. What if we said that that light was Chinese? Am I in the zone? Am I a KKK member yet? Or am I just making casual observations, okay? How about this? Light. Light comes out. Boom! Shade. Can't see me now. Neither of you can see the light, okay? No light for you, okay? This is Chinese, no light for you. Okay, we're checking, the photons are hitting your face. Here's the photons hitting your teeth. Photons going inside your mouth. There we go. 
Now, is that a Chinese person, or am I a crazy KKK member? I don't know. Now, what if I went like this? Oh, I eat the dog! <laughs> you want the Chinese food? You like a lice? Come eat some lice! Now, if I, if I told you that was my impersonation of a Holocaust survivor, <laughs> would you then say that that's racist? No, you wouldn't. And so I've proven that for the rest of time, anything that I ever say will not be racist, and I am absolved of any sort of guilt or anything that would get me kicked off of Adult Swim. Anytime. James, will you come fix this thing? <sighs> okay. All right, folks, now when I say something that really rocks your world, okay, it's too much to handle, that's, that's like almost like a paradigm shift that changes comedy forever and just makes you amazed and sort of say, wow, and really think about the way the world is, I want you to go like this. Ooh, no, he didn't. Let's try that right now. Go ahead. Ooh, Ooh no, no, he didn't. didn't. Try to sound a bit more black. <laughs> One more time. Oh, no, he didn't. Hell yeah, there we go, okay. Now, now, when I say something that the liberal Jewish media doesn't want you to hear, I'm going to go like this, and you're going to say, you're going to go, anti-Semite. All right, can we turn the echo down? Is there a way to turn that down? I didn't, I never specified that I wanted echo. I don't understand why they would have it set up that way. When I've been up here for 10 minutes saying that I do not want echo. Guys, what's going on? I need someone to help me out. What's going on with my belly button? What the heck is the deal with this? The picture of my belly button this morning, I couldn't figure out what is going on with this thing, okay? It starts to itch. And now here's the thing. This belly button infection that I have, it's just crazy. I don't even know what's going on. But it starts to go... But it's... But this... But it... Okay, there's Professor Audio. Oh, it's because I'm covering it. That's why it's making this noise. Okay, so this itch, it's going down my belly button. It starts going down my leg, and it's like right here on my leg. See? Yeah, it's right there, and for some reason, it's right here on my leg. I don't know what the deal is, but it's right here on my leg. It's like hurting, like right here on my knee. I couldn't figure out what the deal is. It's, it was right here, right on my knee. See, look, look, help me. I need an EMT to fucking help me. Help! Now, guys, I have a banana in my pants. That's a prop. I wasn't actually touching anything. Therefore, I'm not going to get in trouble. Same excuse I used in middle school when I did the same routine. That's how cutting edge this comedy is. Okay. <clears throat> it says, force crotch in the girl's face. Did complete. Okay, guys, hot quiz! Whoa, hot quiz! Psss, hot quiz! I need two volunteers from the audience to do hot quiz. Who's gonna do hot quiz right now? Come on up, young man. You as well. Come on up, hot quiz. Here we go. Hot quiz. Hot quiz. What are your names, young men? Steven. Mike. There we go. Now, here we go. Whites moving into the barrio is a disgusting gentrification and, quite frankly, highly racist. Racist as hell hell. Puerto Ricans moving into a white neighborhood is A, good, B, better, or C, best? B. The answer is C. Yale, Harvard, New York Times University studies and Malcolm Gladwell books have shown time and time again... Okay, this is supported by studies, major university studies, for that matter. The diversity makes life and society better does not lead to Puerto Rican kids listening to bachata music on their T-Mobile sidekicks during class and throwing pencils at your son's head for being a cracker. <laughs> cracker maricone, sorry. And even if that did happen, it would somehow be your fault for being such a priv-priv whitey crack. Gentlemen, you can make these seat hot quizzes over. You both lost. You do not get Microsoft tablets! You do not get the Microsoft tablets that were promised to the hot quiz winners. You must also stay after the show for extra punishment. In fact, all of you must. In fact, this show is punishment. All right. We have got a very special word. 
ladies and gentlemen, I like to steal a spotlight for myself. A spotlight for myself. I like to be the big badass in the room, but we got an even bigger badass coming in. We have a troop of the U.S. Marines coming in, and I'm gonna go get them right now. Here we go. You guys, you're ready to see American greatness. I want you to be very respectful of what you're, who you're about to meet. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Sir. At ease. <laughs> Attention. <laughs> Ted Hunt. I'm your sergeant. Now you're gonna have to ride that audio there, okay? I'm covering it, and that's what's reflecting the sound in your popular science magazine. We know why it's making that noise, okay? <laughs> Actually, can we angle... What if we angle the speakers? Oh, what if we did that? Is this one on here? Test, test, test. That's not doing anything. What if we just angle it this way? <clears throat> We're creating an audio weapon. DARPA audio weapon to suppress crowds. This is crowd suppression right now. All right. Anybody in here in the Army? We have any Army vets? You... Come on up here, sir. Get up here. I know you're I know you're fucking old, but you're coming up here and I'm gonna abuse you. I'm not a stranger to abusing the greater generations. I'm a selfish millennial. You're gonna get it. Selfish millennials like me. Now were you in the army, sir? Oh, come on, don't hurt me. Were you in the army? Yes, sir. Uh yeah, what was your what was your division? What division were you? Uh I had one day of basic training and then it stopped working out again. Yeah, sounds like typical communist shit. Uh, I was in the yeah, I was in the Eighth Army Division. Okay, so well, you fucking cowards. I don't know if you were infantry or what, but I was out there doing real man work, killing people in the chest, stabbing them with Bowie knives. All right, I was doing real tactical shit. I was part of an elite terror team. All right, why don't you sit down? Thank you very much. You know, <clears throat> I wish I had a gun right now. I don't need a thirty-round clip. Okay, I don't need extra ammo. I can reload fast. I wish I had two guns, though. I could probably kill everyone in this room before you got up to stop me. <laughs> Remember, Sergeant Pommelson, don't let anyone know that you're coming unhinged. Don't say any of that stuff out loud. Okay, I won't. I just wish I had a Beretta 92F or Glock 17, 17 shots. <laughs> Speed reload. I don't need an assault clip. I'm fine with the civilian clips, because I can reload fast. These two pretty girls right here, I'd kill you last. I'd make sure you knew that my power as a man, I'm a big man with a gun. You'd watch me take out your boyfriends, and then I'd kill you. Don't tell anybody that you're coming unhinged. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing at all these great stories, these great army stories. I might snap. Let's pass around a cup and collect donations. <laughs> we already did donations. Did anyone not donate at the door? You're subhuman. You're subhuman. You better make up for it with damn good filming with that phone ears. That's how I'm going to extract my price from you. Uh, <clears throat> so I was part of the wounded... Let me just skip, skip ahead here. Um, okay. All right, so soldier. You there, soldier. Why weren't you in the army? What's your excuse, son? What's your excuse? Dodge the draft. You're a coward. Is anyone in this audience disabled? Uh, now, I, my dream here is one day I'll do shows big enough that there'll be people in wheelchairs, and I'll just go up to a person in a wheelchair, and, I'll, and I'm going to be like, um, all right, son, I'm going to do you a service today. I'm going to get you into the army. We're going to lie and say you aren't disabled. <laughs> You're going to be part of an elite team. You're going to have to man up. It's going to be tough when you're in that wheelchair. You're going to have to man up. And then I'll, have to, I'll apologize after the show because I don't like being that nasty to people. All right. As of right now, 0800 hours. <clears throat> Come on. Here we go. Attention! As of right now, 0800 hours, you are all part of the Army. I'm your sergeant. My name is Sergeant Pommelson. Welcome to war. Welcome to the Iraq theater of war. Welcome to the desert. I hope you had enough pizza when you were at home. Because Domino's does not deliver. 
to the desert theater of war. <clears throat> look to your left. Now look to your right. One of these people is going to be killed by an Iraqi. <laughs> the time for sitting on your couch watching anime is over. I don't care if you watch new school anime or if you watch old school anime like Ninja Scroll, Ghost in the Shell 1, Akira, Record of Lotus, Lotus War, okay? Macross. I don't care if you're watching Appleseed and Bubblegum Crisis, Tokyo Police 2088, okay? It just does not matter to me. You've been sent here on a killing mission for corporate interests. It is your job to get kills, and I'm going to make sure, personally, that each one of you gets a triple kill, or better. Now that you're in this war, you have one job, that is to kill. And I want you to kill as many Iraqis as you can. As of right now, 0800 hours, you owe me 100 Iraqi scalps. And I want my scalps. The great Civil War general, William Tequinmesh, once said, War is hell, but peace is boring. But war sells. But who's buying? <laughs> you are a tool. <laughs> you, you are a tool of the government you've signed up for. And that means you've signed up for all kinds of fucked up things to happen to you and the brothers you served with. Take this experimental anthrax pill. I hope you're ready to get your whole face burnt off by explosion fire. Serve your country. I hope you're ready to have your legs blown off by an IED and have the skin melted off your face and neck by the experimental anthrax drug you just took. Uh, wife swap parties on army bases. You guys know army bases are hotbeds of infidelity? And the, arm, the, the army wives and army husbands, they all fuck like crazy. A girl I was in school with did a documentary about it. She went to a German army base, and they all, they're all just, like, cheating on each other all the time. It's disgusting. Uh, but for you grunts, your cuckolding will be less gra glamorous and also less voluntary. Military bases, shoddy housing with mold. But it is literally an orgy. 24-7, no-holds-barred, guys and girls orgy. I'm your sergeant. There are WMDs in Iraq. You are going to find them, or I'll be collecting your scalp. Uh, <clears throat> this isn't Call of Duty. There are perks, and there are most certainly are achievements. There are weapons, and there are upgrades, but there are no respawns. As of 0800 hours, you are only al allowed to play games with permadeath, like Diablo 2 Hardcore Mode, <laughs> Binding of Isaac. If I find any members of my platoon playing softcore games, I'm going to Photoshop you into a picture of two guys kissing, and then I will show that to my higher officials, and you will be taken to army homo jail. Let me get you up to date on the latest army slang. You grunts are going to need to know this when you're out there in the trenches, the desert trenches. We're, yes, we are going back to trench warfare. We took a long break from it, but now we're getting back. We found out it was the classiest, most civilized method of warfare, had the most dignity. You'll be wearing metal hat helmets with spikes on top. They're the most regal looking. Okay, this is not the kind of slang you're going to find on Urban Dictionary, folks. Shotguns! We call those short-range fuckers. <laughs> Sniper rifles, like the Dragunov from Metal Gear Solid, we call those long-range fuckers. Okay, machine guns? Those are just plain old fuckers. <laughs> Unless it's your machine gun, in which case you give it the name of your ex-girlfriend. Uh, I only shoot Colt. That's my brand. If I'm in a firefight, I can't find a Colt. I'm either going to die or surrender. That is how deep my brand loyalty runs to Colt. I want all of you to get ready to die for your country. You signed up for this. Good God! I didn't know they stacked shit that high! <clears throat> back in your home, back in your home states where everything's soft and warm and nice, okay?
When you hear someone go, ah, la, 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 I'm not going to do the voice, but when you hear someone go, ah, la, 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 it's funny. Out here, it's not funny. It means you're about to get shot by an Iraqi. <sighs> what's, the, what's the place for Metal Gear Solid? Is it Outer Haven or Outer Heaven? Outer Haven. Outer Haven? Okay. It is my dream! <laughs> As of 0800 hours, the war is over, but you will still be fighting. It is my dream to make a country only for soldiers. I will call it Outer Haven. Uh, okay. That state-of-the-art black camouflage you're wearing is not going to help you, okay? You're not going to be able to hide behind cover. You're just going to have to start running and praying. Okay, that's it. Go out there and get them. Training over. <laughs> There's a little bit more. Hold on. Um, maybe in basic training they taught you to fire in short controlled bursts. That's not going to work here. You're going to have to spray and pray. Just shoot and run. Okay, point the gun in the direction. Hold the trigger down. That's all you've got time for. Grunts, shooting your gun is like a clitoral orgasm. When you get a kill, that's a vaginal orgasm. Today's mission is going to be installing this well so that the villagers can get access to clean drinking water. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Private wine glass! I nicknamed you Tank because your resemblance to Tank from the Matrix. But due to a paper processing hour error, you will now be driving a tank. You know what that means. Dismount, death before dismount. <laughs> Become best friends with the sands of this Afghan land. All right, that's enough. That's enough out of Sergeant Palmerson. Sergeant Palmerson, you're relieved of your duty. You're discharged honorably. Because now it's time for Hot Quiz! Hot Quiz! Hot Quiz! Hey, everybody wants the tablet! We gotta have two volunteers for Hot Quiz. Who wants to get more quiz? Who wants more action? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You're all gay. You just covered your face with your hand. Come up here for Hot Quiz. You want it at the least, you get it the most. And this Hot Quiz is gonna be totally naked. Totally buck-ass naked. Two faggots up on stage. Two gay faggots. Here we go. Okay. Hot quiz sergeant. Despite making up less than 1% of the world's population, Jews absolutely dominate every important field, with most key figures in media, finance, and academia being hardcore Jewish. This fact is A, pure coincidence, parentheses, racist question, B, a testament to their strong work ethic, or C, the end game for the 6,000-year-long Talmudic Jewish conspiracy? C. No, you are racist, and in fact, you're not even going to hear the answer, because you're so racist, your career is over, you are doxxed, you will never work in this town again. The answer is A. This fact is pure coincidence, folks. And even thinking about it as highly racist, why are all basketball players black? Okay? Why don't you just ask yourself that question, spend a few hours writing a paper about that, and leave the Jews alone? They've suffered enough. Okay? You probably own slaves. You're a white piece of shit. You're an anti-Semite, and guess what? Your career's over. Okay. So, did I just rip two pages? Okay. Now, when I was discharged from the army, honorably, okay, it wasn't for any sort of thing, okay, I was honorably let go. Where'd my water go? Did somebody take that? Did somebody take my water jug? Now, after I was discharged from the army, honorably, okay, Needed to find a job, and the first thing that came up was a prison guard. Pretty cool job, if you ask me. It's good. I have, there's this organization called Wounded Warrior Project. That's where your donations will be going to me. And um, the Wounded Warrior Project, we try to find jobs for ex-soldiers. And we, get, we find them cool stuff to do, like, you know, uh, garbage man, trash picker, teacher, school teacher, and... Uh, prison guard. So I got into my job at a prison guard and we were kicking this guy. We were beating this guy. We were kicking him. And I was laughing. And we were all laughing. I forgot what I said, but the other prison guard said, you're so funny. You should be a comedian. We're kicking this guy. So here I am. And these are the, this here, here is the top ten things you don't want to hear when you first get to prison, okay? 
Number 10, raise your hand if you've seen this already. You guys, you guys who are not raising your hands have not seen it already? Okay. Top 10 things you don't want to hear when you first get to prison, okay? If you get to prison, you hear these, you know you're going to be in hot water. Number 10, hi, welcome to prison. My name's Bubba. Okay, pretty standard. That one we're starting off easy there, and I know that that's not as funny as you think. I think it's funny, but just see where I go with it. Number nine, you picked your cellmate yet? <laughs> you can you you two come on up here. Come on up here. Bring some chairs with you, okay? Bring your chairs. Get up here. You yes, you looking at each other. Come on, bring them up. Bring those chairs up. Actually, you know what? Sit back down. It's not, it's better if you're all in the audience. <clears throat> Number eight. You got a few days to pick. Time to choose up, little nigga. <laughs> if you hear that when you get to prison, you're not going to like it the rest of your stay, okay? Number seven. Top seven things you don't want to hear when you get to prison. You fuck me, Bubba, I'll be nice to you. I spoil my hose. Clothes, cigarettes, cup soup, anything you want. If you fuck me, Bubba. <laughs> if you hear that when you get to prison, you might, you gotta call your lawyer, figure out a way to get yourself transferred to another prison, do something, okay? Things are getting dire. Number six. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> All right, little nigga. <laughs> Time to choose. We gonna do this the easy way or the hard way. If you hear that when you get to prison, you can already tell that you're gonna be having, it's gonna be trouble. <laughs> All right. Now we're getting into the serious territory. If you hear Five and above, when you get to prison, it's time to start running. Do something, okay? Do some push-up, push-ups, learn to fight, whatever you got to do, okay? Number five thing you don't want to do when you get to prison. All right, little nigga. Time for me to bust a nut. Open your ass for me and shit. Former MDE fan, not going to see it. I hope, you, hope you're not mad at me for that one. Hope you that's okay. Don't think about that later. <laughs> four. Number four, when you get to prison, you don't want to hear this. You don't want to be hearing this. Okay, this is just bad. This is a bad recipe, okay? All right, nigga. <laughs> now you just push your ass out like you stay making some dookie, and this ain't going to hurt one little bit, nigga. <laughs> Now you can turn away and shit, or you can kiss me, make me make like girlfriend shit, and get get it over with quicker, nigga. <laughs> Number three. When you get to prison, this is one of the last things you could possibly want to hear. Okay. This is probably a recipe for a bad time at prison. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> yeah, nigga. Say fuck my little white ass. Say fuck my bitch ass. Say that shit, bitch. You don't want to be hearing that, okay? Because if that's what you're hearing, you're in trouble. You can already tell things have not gone according to plan. Now, number two, number two, <laughs> number two, shit, man, I just gave that little white nigga AIDS and shit, and I took his shoes. This means that the damage is done, and you're basically a husk of a human being at this point, and there's nothing, there's no way of helping you.
And lastly, the number one thing you don't want to hear on your first day of prison is Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. <laughs> Who's ready for some quiz action? Can I get a volunteer to come up here for the hot quiz? Hot quiz. All right, you in the white shirt, come on up. Hot quiz time. Woo! Big round of applause for this man in the white shirt coming up. Hot quiz. Hot quiz. Is he going to win that Microsoft tablet? Woo! We've got over 15 Microsoft tablets to give away, folks. Everybody in this audience has a chance to win one. Hot quiz. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. What b-ball Duncan drumline drumming? White people hating, car note not paying, $200 shoe buying, T-Mobile sidekick kicking, race, okay, what Bernie Mac, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers, race, okay, what loud music, rude, throwing bags of chips on the ground in your neighborhood, Driving shitty cars, thinking a Maxima's a good car. When they get a Maxima, they say they got a they got a boss nigga car. Like a 2002 Maxima is what a boss nigga would be driving. What race is responsible for global poverty? Asians. The human race. Get out of my sight, you racist piece of shit. Although Asians do more than their fair share to contribute to global poverty, it is in fact the human race. Because we are all the same color, genetics, IQ, these things are not real. If you watched Bill Nye, the doctor, who was, a pr who was he does have a master's degree in science, and he's not just like an engineer like people say he is, said that people are all the same, so it's real. All right, and on that note, guys, <laughs> it's time to smash racism! Oh yeah! Are you ready? Smashing racism! Oh! It's time to smash racism! In the groinous, straight groinous. Yo, it's time we took a little break to smash racism, y'all. Even though we, even though. Guys, I was on a racist web forum the other day. I was on a racist web forum the other day. W, just got to adjust something here. Just got a little bit of an itch. Here we go. I was on a racist web forum, www.hitlerthoughts.com, okay? That's where KKK members, KKK represents over 50 to 100,000 active white men, terrorists, Christians in the United States. They convene on hitlerthoughts.com. I was there posting anti-racist comments, making sure that the discussion stayed on track and didn't get into any bad territory. I was using humor and snarky remarks like Jon Stewart to let them know their thoughts were invalid. <clears throat> okay, But I found the following racist comment, which was written by a Chinese man. What? Now our Chinese friend in the back here Listen, you seem like a very nice person, but lately I've been coming across a lot of racists online. A lot more than the fair share have been Chinese. So what's going on with that, okay? Are you Chinese? In the pink? What are you? So half Chinese, half Irish. <laughs> so essentially full Chinese. Now, I don't know what the deal is with these Chinese racists, but I read this comment, and it was wick-whack, y'all. It said this. And I'm not going to do it in a Chinese accent, because I'm not a fucking KKK member. All right? It said this. Certain group of people, and I think, I, know, I think you know exactly who I'm talking about, and I don't even need to say it. Cape Verdeans. You like that? He said he wasn't going to say the group, and then he says the group. <laughs> Real smart. Okay? You can already tell this guy's working with limited resources. <laughs> Cape, Re Cape Verdeans are literally the stupidest people. Spelled stupidest wrong. On racial IQ tests, they don't even have a slot because they're off the page. They get beat out by some types of fish. They get beat out by smartphones, bugs, the new Toyota Prius, and my uncle Wong, but that's another story. Look at the problems facing Americas. And he writes, facing Americas? 
Look, dude, learn to spell check before you hate on the internets, okay? Uh, and so I wrote that to him. I wrote a comment that said, learn to spell check before you hate on the internets. Next thing I know, the whole thread, boom. Okay? I, they, didn't block, they didn't lock it or anything, but another racist blown right out of the water next to me. So you can thank me later. I was like, yo, try again next time, sweetie. <laughs> try harder, sweetie. He's probably on the other end of the computer just shitting his pants, just crying about his life. Like, yo, you're a racist, so you live in your mom's basement, so you're stupid. <clears throat> okay. Oh, and this is probably a picture of the guy, okay? Probably found a picture of him. Piece of shit. All right. So this is a new experimental one. I didn't even write anything for this yet. I just have the plan, okay? So here it goes. This is, um, this is... Dudu Oban, the son of Dudu Osen. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I have like two things written and then the rest I'm just supposed to improvise, so this is going to go nowhere. Here we go. All right. Hello. <laughs> I, am Dudu, I am Dudu Osen. This is my son. His name is Dudu Oban. His father, the proud warrior, Dudu Osen. Warrior King Dudu Osan. My father was Dudu Ogun, the king of the land, proud Dudu Ogun. I raised my son. He say, he say, Daddy, what are we to do? I said, Listen, the Dudu tribe, they are evil, they are possessed by evil spirit. So we must kill them. And so my son, he is a proud warrior. We kill the Juju tribe. We fight them in generations long racial war. And I tell him it is white man fault. And he said to me, I killed them. Oh, oh. oh why did you do this? <laughs> all right, that's all. That's it. I look sort of, I have sort of a Jewish look about me. And uh, something when I, my mom she my mom checks out my comedy that I do and so and she thinks she'll she's really gonna stick it to me by telling me that I look Jewish or that I am Jewish or whatever and I'm I'm like oh mom that's that's terrible you're really like my mom in trying to like show me and trying to get me back for being quote unquote racist is being is saying that it's bad to be Jewish and I say mom uh, listen I have this facial hair okay I got this big Ari Levowitz nose uh, but here's the deal okay. I pro yeah, right, Mom. I probably would have been one of Hitler's top soldiers. Okay? <laughs> My hair is straight. I'm tall. I can follow orders good. Okay? I'm not blonde-haired or blue-eyed. All right? But neither was Hitler. So I think he probably would have seen me, and he would have been like, you know, I see something... I see something in myself in this kid. I'm going to give him a shot. Let's see what he's got. Uh, I kind of like that kid. I didn't, I didn't really say that, but I did have... I did have, um, that's based on a conversation I was having with a Portuguese guy, and we were talking about how Portuguese, how they have, like, Moorish blood, like, Portugal was conquered by, uh, Northern Africans, and his, instead of, like, arguing with what I was saying, he just said that he would have made one of Hitler's top soldiers, and I was like, man, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty good rebuttal, um, how much, how long have we been going here? Has it been an hour? Less than an hour? A little bit? Okay, let's see if this is funny or not. It's probably not. Hot <laughs> quiz! Let's get another volunteer. Um, who's going to volunteer for hot quiz? Okay, don't stare at the eye candy, all right? Someone brought that eye candy to show off. You don't have to stare at her, okay? She's a human being, too, okay? And her body is a tight object, but we're not going to objectify that, okay? She's wearing, she, was she wearing a puff jacket? She's wearing a sort of reflective jacket and a hat that shows you she's New York City, she's cool, she's down with whatever, okay? She probably smells good, her hair and her neck. You could probably touch her neck and just feel five years younger. You feel like you're alive again, okay? But we're not going to objectify that. We're not going to treat her or you... Okay, I don't care how beautiful you are on the outside, because on the inside, okay, on the inside, you and her are the same. 
Okay, never mind the outside. Sweetheart, on the inside, you're just as beautiful as Carmen Electra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's because I'm a good person. <laughs> now, do you need a volunteer for a hot quiz? Someone want to come up here? All right, come on up. Get up here for the hot quiz, okay? Hot quiz! And their guns and their bombs, zombie! Hot quiz! What percentage of dads think about their hot daughters sexually? Is it A, 90%, or B, 95%? 90%. The answer is B, 95%. You do not win a tablet, I'm afraid. But according to Pew Research Center and MoveOn.org, over 95% of fathers think about their hot daughters sexually. Think about them blowing high school football players and sending nudes with the phones their fathers bought them. 100% of Hispanic fathers think about their Angelita princess in a white dress and watch their daughters in the shower. Now, let's have a disclaimer here for all you perverts in the audience, okay? All you perverts, of course we're talking about an 18-year-old daughter, okay? I mean, this is not pedophilia, we're not talking, that's so gross. Thinking about 17-year-old pussy? Uh, 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 uh. Oh my god, that is disgusting and awful. 17-year-old uh, 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 uh. Oh, I can't even think about it. 18-year-old pussy gets me off so hard. But se ah, ah, ah. Oh my god, I'm gonna be fucking sick. Uh, that's why nearly every king or religious leader in history has some story about knocking up or taking his bride at age 18 only. Forever only. No, 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 no. Don't even ah, ah, don't go there. Listen, I know when I'm when I'm jerking off, okay, I don't want to be the one of these comedians making jerking off jokes, because that's fucking gay, okay? A lot of these at that place that I do comedy in the Middle East, they make jokes about jerking off all the time. It's fucking gay. But um I start thinking about Pamela Anderson, Sandra Bullock, all right, women who have aged gracefully and are therefore hot to me. I think about women's achievements, okay? Listen. I think only about women's achievements. You girls, what do you, what do you, um, what do you, are you in school? Are you both in school? What do you, what's your majors? Dietetics. Marketing. What the fuck is dietetics? <laughs> <laughs> what, nutrition. Nutrition. What are you switching into? English. English? Okay. Listen, you girls are hot. All right, don't get me wrong. You're hot. Right? You got it, you got what it takes. You got it going on. But if I were to go home and think about you, which I won't, because I respect the fuck out of you, but if I were, I would be thinking, oh my god, such a good English major and, and marketing major. Oh, she's in marketing? She's doing so much with her life. She's really pulling it together and proving those men wrong. She's going to be the next female astronaut. I wouldn't be thinking about your bodies. You disgusting. What is wrong with you? And that's why Meryl Streep is the hottest woman I've ever seen. And that's why when female actresses complain about not getting parts once they hit the wall, uh, it is, yeah, I agree with them. No justice, no peace. Can I go like 30 minutes over time? Thank you, Squatch. Okay, this is not comedy. This is a, this is a piece I prepared. Um, I just have to get this out here in case I am killed by Mossad or something. I just want you to know how I feel on this issue. Um, let me get some water here. Okay. <clears throat> Lena Dunham is an obvious, disgusting pedophile, probably because she grew up with a fruitcake for a father who was obsessed with painting vaginas. He probably thought it was healthy for his baby daughters to grow up around giant paintings of cartoon vaginas and nasty sex positions, and maybe that's why she stuffed her little sister full of gravel. Look up Carol Dunham paintings. Her father's name is Carol. That's gay. I don't care. I'm not here to make an apology for pedophilia. That's your job. In fact, pedophilia apology is going to be a field of study you can major in at whatever gay college you're attending in 2018. But my hatred for Lena Dunham is multifaceted. It's, it's mainly about how she's trampling femininity and also making it cool to be an abomination. 
the pedo shit is just icing on the cake. Head kick icing on the cake. Also, I don't like fat people. It's not a coincidence that she's big and fat. I hope one day when she challenges me to a street fight and maybe, maybe I'll accidentally kill her with my bare hands. I don't know. I just don't know. That's just a public service announcement. That's not intended to be funny. It is what it is, okay? It's important to know exactly where you stand, okay? You know what the issues are. You know where you stand on the issues, but you don't know. We're going to find out on the political grid, on the spectrum, exactly what they would label you, okay? So let's do this here. As we're going through, the answers are going to be numbered one, two, three. You just add up whichever answer you pick, and that's when you tally it up in your head, okay? Don't be dummies. Do a little basic math, okay? Which is the following? Which of the following is the closest to your view? And as you can see, this is hard to read, so I'll read it out loud. One, government regulation of business is necessary to prevent companies from polluting. Okay, so if you pick that one, you score one for that, okay? Two, government regulation of business is necessary to prevent companies from exploiting the poor. Sounds reasonable. Three, is necessary to keep the rich from getting too rich. Here we go. Guys, immigrants belong in this country. The question is where? And I'm not just talking about your friendly immigrants, like these young men right here, brown skin, good hearts, proud people, okay? I'm talking about displacement levels of people who don't share Western culture and in fact are antithetical to Western culture. Where do they belong? Answer one, other neighborhoods. Two, white neighborhoods. Three, my neighborhood. Or four, my ass and colon. <laughs> Guys, how much foreign aid should we be sending to Israel? Number one. Ten million per day. That's a reasonable about the buddy. We did it. Number two. Send us 20 billion a day. We're going to use the buddy. We're helping you. We have your best interest at heart. Or, how, or three. As much money as we need for the missiles. We have to buy more missiles. Okay, <clears throat> guys, white, white children outperform a certain other race in schools. Not on my watch, but it's happening right now. Rather than raise certain other children up, we must lower the benchmark and whites along with it. The most fair, egalitarian way of doing this is, one, fill everyone's head with home of sexual gibberish until no one knows which way is up anymore. Common core. Okay, how do you add two plus two? Use a number line. <laughs> two, or, uh, or two, reintroduce whites only drinking fountains, but this time tainted with estrogen so that the white boys will be thinking less about math and more about wearing dresses. <laughs> Very progressive. <laughs> I hope my sons end up that way. Uh, <clears throat> okay. The EPA just dumped a bunch of shit in the Colorado River. The water supply for 45 million Americans is now tainted for decades. Clearly, we must. One, ensure that more blacks and Hispanics are employed by the EPA. Increase diversity, which is strength. Two, ensure that government workers receive generous pensions for life. Three, remain calm knowing that our Kenyan Muslim commie president will soon give a speech. Four, be thankful that most of those 45 million are Republicans and teabaggers. Fuck their water! John Stewart! Five, listen to Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson and triple of the size of the budget for the EPA and also send more money to Israel for the missiles. Uh, six, be happy, to have be happy to have contaminated water to drink because there are places in Africa that don't even have that much. Seven, all of the above or eight, gun control. Okay, now tally up the answers. Okay, we're gonna get to the results in a second. Is this the results? I think it might be. No, it's not. It must be the next one. Okay. Guys, having a healthy contingent of homosexuals in the military is key to our defensive strategy. Okay? I was in the, I was in the Iraq war. I was in the desert theater of war. And there's one thing that we needed. Lots of strong-ass women. Yeah. We needed, we needed a platoon. My troops, we were down. My troops, we were down. We were in a Humvee. We were under, under heavy fire. I said, Sergeant, give me 10 homosexuals now! 
<laughs> so yes, sir. <laughs> can we do that? No, you can't. Um, I was gonna make it funny with a gay accent. None of these Salon.com Huffington Post articles ever mention male-on-male rape statistics in the military because it's not important. Because men can't be raped. Because fuck them. Because who cares? <laughs> Okay. A lot of work has to be done. With the forced retire of General Petraeus, a new slot in the high command has opened up. It would behoove us to fill this slot in the high command with, one, a Muslim transsexual person of color. I could see them making a lot of good decisions in battle, in the heat of battle, okay? They were a man. Now they're a woman. They're Muslim, so they know what the opposition is like. They're thinking, hmm, what's the most, what's a feminine approach to this problem based on my masculine viewpoints? And boom, they're going to solve it. Two, a self-professed anti-American Muhair Latina terrorist. Okay, it worked for Nylon Magazine. You got MIA. And if even, you know what, fuck it, okay? Even if she doesn't do a good job, the U.S. Army's going to start cranking out some good music. Three. A gay guy with AIDS, because he knows what it's like to be under fire. Okay, that's not, oh, it's not funny. Oh, you can't make fun of AIDS. Well, okay, guess what? AIDS, AIDS is not a death sentence anymore, okay? You take a pill, and you have a life expectancy that's the same as a regular person, uh, and it's just funny, because they had a lot of dirty sex to get it. So a gay guy with AIDS. Four, a group of eight black hermaphrodites who suffer from a rare mental disorder that causes them to perceive themselves as one person. Could be the, gen- the next general of the armed forces. Okay? It's it's so crazy, it just might work. <laughs> or, uh, let's see, it's five, Boy George, throwback to number three, better style. Six, uh, and number six for filling in for General Petraeus is a former Israeli cabinet member who's not even a fucking U.S. citizen. Get lots of them in the White House immediately. Guys, stem cell research is a very important topic. We need a steady supply of human flesh from a science. But unfortunately, as Bill Nye, the science goy, has said many times, it is not enough. We must also kill little kittens while they're alive. The more pain they suffer, the more science we can extract, and therefore the more space rockets. Okay, I watched a documentary that explained black holes. I am now a genius. Please follow me on Facebook. I'll be posting pictures of stars. Two, normalize pedophilia. Three, enact regulations to stifle industry and cripple our productive capacity, then ship those jobs to China, which is fucking 100 times worse with pollution, you fucking idiots. Or four, realize that pedophilia is an orientation that people are born with and have to deal with. It is not an abomination or a scourge. But instead may actually help society by building ion rockets to find water on Saturn. Black scientist Neil says that water on Saturn's moon would mean blah 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 if we could just find water. Pedophiles are normal. Bye. Now I think it's important that we devote at least 80% of this country's GDP to finding water on other planets. Because that will somehow help us in the short term. Because there's a, it's like a big water ball up there. And it means that there's water in other places in the universe. And we can, in a hundred years, we can go there. So let's, we'll go talk about it now. <laughs> Guys, same sex, sex couples are exactly like hetero couples, okay? And I don't want to hear anybody saying otherwise. All right? Love is love. If it's me loving you, I don't know. Okay, I don't care if we're kissing, getting married, okay? If you two want to get married, I don't care. It's love. I'm actually not an- that anti-gay, but I'm, I'm, I am going to say this joke. Now, never mind the fact that the average gay man has had 3,729 partners, as evidenced by my personal research. I used to live next to an old gay couple. <clears throat> it's a true story. They were exactly like a hetero couple. Uh, not one bit of difference. And if they say anything about it, but that but they were cleaner. 
They had nicer interior decoration. They were actually better. Okay? They had better taste in music. They had wittier conversation. They had better fashion. They were more fun to hang out with. We hung out on the balcony. We drank wine. We listened to uh, fucking New Order. It was a cool time, okay? Parents for some kids one day. They would, okay? They also fucked loud three times a day or more and smelled like farts and cum all the time. <laughs> Not joking or trying to be insulting. I realize this may come across as homophobic. Uh, but by the same token, I was also fart raped, and they manspread it a lot, so pick your poison. <laughs> so you pick what you're going to get mad at. And then forgive me for the other thing. Also, this question was written by a Chinese guy from online, so I'm not responsible for its content. Like many political things going on right now, gay marriage and gay adoption are inevitable things that are irreversible and can't be stopped, so it makes no sense even trying to debate them or fight them. And I'll also say that, you know, we're on the, we're on the border with World War III. Okay, we got Carly Fiorina. She's a a prominent Republican candidate saying that she wouldn't even talk to Vladimir Putin. Uh, so it is, you know, it's conceivable that we'd be in fucking World War III soon. So what we need to do is figure out how these gays can get married ASAP. Now, uh, the next step we must work start working towards once gays are married. And by the way, once that happens, we're going to be in a utopia that you wouldn't believe. So it is worth really fighting for this one. Animals being able to adopt kids. Let's get that going next, okay? Let's start working towards that. Guns being able to adopt kids, but at the same time banning adults from adopting guns. Three, children being able to marry or adopt adults. Probably. Or, um, children... <laughs> Todd Nickerson being allowed to adopt ten young boys. Does that, do people know who Todd Nickerson is? Does anybody... Raise your hand if you know who he is. Do you know what Salon.com is? They did an article called uh, I'm, the, I'm the Pedophile But You're the Monster with a fake person named Todd Nickerson talking about how he's like a pedophile who doesn't touch kids and you're a monster for thinking that pedophilia is wrong. Um, anyway, let's add up the results. Remember, now let's find out what the results were for the political aptitude quiz. What are you? What sort of, are you a Democrat or a Republican? Are you a Libertarian? Are you an Independent? What kind of person are you? You're all faggots! Here's me being badass, smoking a $20 cigar, okay? Here's me in a few years. You can see my body's not that nice, but why am I with a 10 or 9? Why am I with a hot bitch, okay? That's not you, that's me. This is you. I'm cool. All right, sorry, guys. What else we got in this? What else we got in here? Let's see. We got, oh, this is a good one. We'll scratch your heads over that. Oh, man, how much more time can I go for? How much, what do you, what do you feel like, you guys feel like leaving yet? Have you had enough? Raise your hand if you had enough. I won't be mad. Raise your hand if you've had enough. Pay for your parking? Where, do you park in a pay lot? I'll pay for your parking, that makes sense. Okay. Um. Um. If you guys, if you guys, uh, if you, if this starts to be too much, I've gone over, have I gone over an hour? Yeah. Okay, yeah. If you start to get bored, just leave. I'm not going to yell at you for leaving. Um, no hard feelings. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So shortly after, <laughs> shortly after I was, uh, fired from my prison guard job for being too rough with the inmates, I got, I found this opening for couples who want to adopt, couples who want to adopt, uh, who want to start having kids, but they're not ready. They don't know whether or not they're ready for the commitment of having children. Okay. So my, my job was to pretend to be a baby for rich couples. Um, so I'm going to give you a sampling of sort of what I, what I did at this job. Can I sneak past you here? Very graceful. So this is what I did. I did the, this is what I did here. We, 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 I'm a baby. We, baby, want milk. Baby, want milk. Give baby milk. Baby, want tit milk. Show baby where milk comes from. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. Baby wants 
of a college student. So there we go. And sorry for messing with you guys in the audience. Um, so shortly after that job, I started working for British families. British families trying to figure out if they would need to adopt children. Uh, this time no longer as a baby, but as a, a young boy. So, if a baby, can't, if a uh, family can't figure out if they want to adopt a British child, they hire me. I come in and I do my routine. Okay, so I would be kind of like this to give you an impression of what I would be like. Okay, I'm not going to do anything sexual. Yeah. Mommy, can I have a toffee? Can I have a toffee, mommy? Please, mommy, can I watch Harry Potter? Please don't. Am I spitting on you? It's clean, don't worry. I test, I'm tested. I tested me myself. Please don't pat on my bottom, mommy. Please don't pat on my bottom. Please don't. <laughs> mommy, mommy, am I old enough to smoke fags yet? Can I have a fag, mommy? Please. Mommy, please vote for Bernie Sanders. He's going to make Harry Potter real. He promised, and it won't cost any money. It's not going to cost anything, mommy. That was my impression of a British college student. Right there. Now, shortly after this happened, you know, all these statistics came out about bird ownership. Now, birds have a lifespan. They live to be in their 50s, or, you know, they live, they live a long time. Certain birds do. So if you buy one of these birds and then you neglect it, it's really just abusive. It's bird neglect. So people want to find out beforehand whether or not they have what it takes to own a bird, okay? So I would step in, and they would pay me, you know, exorbitant fees to see what it was like uh, owning a bird. So I would do, I basically go to their homes, these nice, you know, these nice uh, three-story uh, walk-ups in, uh, in London, and I would do this, I would go, So they would know whether or not they wanted a bird or not. Usually they would just keep paying me, though, to be their sort of stand-in. Oh, what is this? Damn it. My assistant, who's Chinese, of course. Come on! My assistant, who's Chinese, wrote this in the notes. If they don't laugh, it's because they're a coward and the reason Boston was bombed. God sent those bombers because you're all cowards. Damn it! Ching! That's so off 
hand. You can't be writing stuff like that in my notes. It throws me off. Hot quiz! Who's uh, do we have any fat messes, male in the audience? Who's got really bad hygiene? Who? You're pointing at this kid. Is that does he stink or something? He looks normal. What's his deal? He's a bit crunchy. He's a bit retarded. All right, you got long hair. That's good enough. Get up here with long hair. All right. Any Dragon Ball Z fans in the audience? No. All right. You don't know who the characters are. All right. Fuck. Which hot quiz? You ready? You ready for your chance to win a free Microsoft tablet? Yeah, let's go. And we got a Zoom also. <laughs> which which Dragon Ball Z character best describes you? A. Goku, B. Vegeta, C. Piccolo, or D. Bacterian? Um, Goku, I guess. Correct answer was Bacterian. You gross fuck. Also, your power level is the closest to his. Please go sit down. <laughs> Sorry about that. that. Now, picking on that kid because he's got long hair, but that's a joke. If we had any like big, fat messes in the audience, that would be good for them, but we'll get that. Uh, that'll be on my show when I've got disabled person there, and we'll have all the spectrum. We'll have the full color spectrum there. Fuck mm. shit. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, guys, does anybody else think homosexuality is kind of gross? Disgusting. Okay? It's fucking gross. I can't believe it. You know? It keeps me up at night. It keeps me up at night. I just have these nightmares. I wake up with these nightmares, sweaty, covered in nightmares. I... God damn it! I'm getting cucked here. Okay. I just have... You know what? I have these nightmares. You know what it's like, man? I don't... I, it's... Are you gay? No. I don't have a problem with gay people, but I just don't want them around me, you know? <sighs> I wake up with these nightmares, you know, sweating, like I just ran a marathon. These nightmares, I, th I think I like, have these nightmares about these, these faggots, and they're just raping me all night. In my nightmares, they're just raping me. These faggots are just raping me. <laughs> all right, that one's in the, in, in the works. We're working on that one. We're workshopping that one. <laughs> uh, I wake up, I'm soaking wet, just soaked through my PJs, grab crotch. These guys weren't just hungry for cum, they were looking for a snack. <laughs> Here's one for you guys. Anybody have an iPhone 6? Anybody? Yeah? You know, they're talking a lot about the iPhone 7 coming out. You hear a lot of reviews about that, right? I'm kind of waiting for the iPhone 8. <laughs> Smashing waste is Are you ready? <laughs> Step into my world. Live in your world. Play in mine. <laughs> Guys, here's a comment I found. I was on an Indian pharmaceutical company searching for cheap Cialis, written by a Chinese, an Indian person. An Indian person. Do you believe this? An Indian person wrote this. Why do Jews always want to start trouble? Chinese want to be left alone. Indian want to be left alone. White people want to be left alone. But the Jews are always causing problems, making it bad for everybody. Why do they do this? That's an example of the shit we have to get rid of. Starting right now, 2016. Let's get a chant going. Deport racism! Deport racism! Let's hear it. Deport racism! Deport racism! To poor racism! You didn't chant. Dude, what's the deal? Why don't you chant? Huh? Jesus! I'm a status quo guy. Why don't you chant? What's the deal? I don't know. That's not what it was. Why didn't you chant? What's up, man? I, I kind of like it how it is. <laughs> That's funny. You comedian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, though, you keep looking at people like that, one of these days someone's going to try to fuck you. <laughs> I look forward to that day. You what? I look forward to that day. What? <laughs> you heard me? I heard you? I think so. You think so? Yeah. Yeah? 
Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's the deal, man? You think you can captivate a crowd in comedy, huh? You think you're better than me? <laughs> What's up? I got nothing. Sure. <laughs> What's the deal, dude? That on your wedding day. And that is just this. savvy audiences can really appreciate and get into. And that's why we're here in Cambridge, because you guys are a young, savvy audience, and you probably just, you were thinking, I want to hear someone hate women all night. <laughs> Alright, let me rip through this here, and let's see what else was bad in this. This makes sense. My notes, it says, I hate women, I don't like women either. It says, call up a lesbian from audience and put my boot on her face. Yeah, I hit women. What are you going to do about it? I can almost guarantee that that was written by Chang, my Chinese assistant. But there is a small chance that those are my thoughts. Um, cool movie premise idea. The title is Fags. Stands for Force All Gooks to Suck. It's about the Vietnam War elite team of gay soldiers who use their sexuality as a weapon. Starring Daniel Craig. Um, <clears throat> Alright, we have a very special guest here. Okay, he's, He is very special. When I say he's special, I mean it. Okay, so don't, so don't you know, say loud things. You can't pop any balloons around him or make loud noises. Okay, here he comes. We're going to go get him. Hello, my name is Kyle, uh, I, I have a girlfriend, she has boobs, <laughs> she has boobs, she has boobs, <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Kyle, <laughs> you be my friend. You have short hair and you're wearing a baggy t-shirt. <laughs> Do you have a penis? <laughs> you don't? I thought so. My, my mom said girls don't have penis. I know that they don't. I know you have a penis. Well, what do you, can I touch your hair? Can I touch your hair? Look at your hair. Well, when you do your hair? Well, it's nice. You don't like neck. Can I talk your neck? It's nice. <laughs> Watch this! Boy! Boy! Girl! Boy! Boy! Girl! <laughs> Are you jealous? <laughs> oh, oh. Someone called me a nigger. I am not a nigger. Everybody, please vote for Bernie Sanders. He's going to make everything free. Please vote for Bernie. Please. Um, uh, audience member touched my penis. Shove crotch in audience member's face, line people up and jump over them. I have a girlfriend, her name is Elizabeth, she has Down syndrome, I finger her. Kiss girls in the audience, give me a kiss or I'll kill you, I'll put a plastic bag over your head. Uh, okay, I love the next presenter, his name is Thomas. I am autistic Thomas. I have autism. I am not retarded. Uh, I'm not like Kyle. He is a fucking retard. I, 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 I hate him. Have you ever noticed how your aide doesn't like wiping your ass? 
what's the deal with shit ass? I hate, I hate retards like Kyle. All chicks like me are good at nice, but retards are not. Kyle's a fucking dumbass. I had a can of Pringles for dinner. I have a girlfriend and I finger her. I call her ugly because I'm nagging her. I read that online if you need that nagging works. Hey, do you have a boyfriend? No. My name is Thomas, nice to meet you. Um, uh, you're a dumb bitch. Will you be my girlfriend? Yeah. I knew that nagging works. <laughs> Most people hate nice guys. Religious people are so stupid. They're the fucking problem with the world. I drink energy drinks all day. <laughs> I was gonna do Gutta Man, but I think everybody's seen Gutta Man. But there's one new specification, a uh, new one new part that I was gonna do for Gutta Man. Hey man, you ever have some good pussy, man? Yeah. Let me ask you this, brother. You ever have some pussy that's not exactly up to specification? <laughs> Um, I do I do stand up here in, in Boston um, at that place the middle uh, the Middle East there used to be a place called Grandma's basement and uh, when I did my Jewish Sam Hoidel routine I had this conversation the next day I was told that I couldn't come up because I had gone over time by like two minutes but they let everybody else go over like 10 minutes there so here this is a conversation um, hey am I allowed back there yet Grandma's basement this is this guy's name is Tom Dunlop your ability to lit to not listen is impressive. What's that? What's that mean? I'm pretty sure you said I was banned for one week, but I gave some extra time for you to cool off. He says, "How thoughtful." Before you went on stage, I told you that if you went over time again, you couldn't go on the next time I see you. So next time we're both there at the same time, you can't perform. You don't have to stick around. You can just say hi or whatever. You could even be clever and only come when I'm not there. Stand up against whatever status quo you seem to think we all are. Ideally, you'd come and empathetically apologize for disrespecting your fellow comedians by going over your time to the point where the lights and sound system had to be shut off on several occasions. But all you do is be seen by me is at a mic night, not be super antagonistic and not perform. Now, this is I've been very careful to not like fuck with people or be disdainful, even when they're totally bombing, even when they're making jokes about fucking rape and jacking off. As every they're they're fucking the comedy is such faggot shit. And I'm always polite. I'm always clapping. I always, I, I, it's, it's ridiculous. And my payback for that is getting hit in the head with a microphone. I don't saw that, uh, but that, <laughs> um, so I wrote, uh, okay, little baby man, Tom Dunlop, classic big fish in a small pond syndrome. You have 90 Facebook likes, but yeah, I guess you are the big swinging dick at Hong Kong castle inside the Howard Johnson. For a brief moment, I had this fantasy of contacting all two of your ex-girlfriends and doing some research and whipping up a nice ten-minute-long set about what a weak half-man you are, but that would be entirely too much attention spent on a throwaway non-entity like you. You could do your little improv troupe every night from now until the end of time, and you'd never be funny. What's your whole sense of humor based on? How awkward and gangly you are and how much you jack off? Christ, man, get some self-respect. Anyway, Tom, you've successfully pushed my buttons, so next time I come up there, instead of things being cool and relaxed, they're going to be fucking uncomfortable for you. And then I did, my, the next time I was up there, I did my 10 minute long Jerry Sandusky routine. <laughs> but that's, um, I think we're at the end. Well, let me see if there's anything else in this computer here. I have one where I do, I have, I took a picture of my cock with a cock ring on and it's a close up. And I tell people it's my armpit. I had an armpit infection. And I ask you, um, how to fix that. But. I don't know if I would need to fire the projector up for that one. <laughs> but that's it. Thank you thank you all for coming to see me here. Uh, and thanks for staying, by the way. And thank you for letting me harass you. I'm sorry if I made anyone too uncomfortable. <laughs>